everyone, and welcome to Silver Streak News, Episode 9. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today, we're going to try something slightly different with our news podcast. We have four different segments, new and improved, to show you guys today. And with that, we're off to Thomas. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Academics from distance learning segment, I guess. Today I have Linnea here, and we're going to be asking a few questions about what it's like with distance learning. So let's jump right into it. So how do you think distance learning is uh, affecting the school year? Um, well, for me, I've been doing pretty good keeping my grades up. So do you think distance learning is easier or harder than uh, in-person school? Um, there's pluses and minuses to it. I don't know which one I would choose, but I find distance learning being a little more flexible with like having time to get your schoolwork and stuff done. But when you're in school, you have more of a set schedule and it's easier to keep track of what you've done and what you haven't done. And so now here's the question, which do you prefer? I don't know. There, like I said, there's pluses and minuses, both of them, but I'd probably rather go to school than do at home. Now, I'd, I'd like to take this time to talk to everyone about keeping your grades up during these times. These are still grades going in the grade book. If you don't get your work done, you're going to end up not being able to participate in uh, fall sports when they come around next year or end up getting a failing grading having to take the grade over. I know it's flexible during these times, but you gotta keep your grades up. Thank you, Thomas, and welcome to the first ever edition of Around Town. I'm here today at Osakis Country Club this golf course opened last Saturday, April 18th, and has been up and running ever since. It's a perfect way to be outside, get exercise, and social distance all at the same time, which is why it has been a popular attraction for golfers all over the county. Speaking of golfers... Hey guys! Morning! Morning! What brings you to the golf course on such a fine day? Oh, just enjoying the fine spring weather and for me as a high school player, preparing for a possible upcoming season. But what about the coronavirus? What has the golf course done to prevent the spread? Well, first of all, they asked you either pay on the phone or only one person in the clubhouse at a time. They've also done a tremendous job spreading out the tee times into 24 minute increments and putting sponges in the hole so that you can retrieve your golf ball without touching anything. Oh, and most important, they don't have any bathrooms. So make sure that you go before. But if you have an emergency, there's a perfectly good outdoor bathroom. Well, one more question for you. What is your favorite thing to do after finishing a golf round? Tip, Tip top. top. Oh, good idea. Here I am at delicious Tip Top Dairy Bar. Because of the coronavirus, many things have been shut down. However, Tip Top is continuing to stand strong. They have had to make some alterations in how they run things. First of all, they ask their customers to order outside rather than inside. They also ask their employees to wear gloves, and they ask their customers standing outside to stand at least six feet apart. But other than that, Tip Top's ice cream is as good as ever, and they continue to thrive. On to you, Logan. Hello everyone, welcome to the new segment, Senior Spotlight. I'm Logan here on my dock on a beautiful spring day with no interviewees, but nothing to worry about. I had a delightful chat with homecoming king and queen, Daniel Savageau and Cameron Hoffarth. And while the Zoom meeting sort of failed due to technical difficulties, I'm here to present the information that they shared with me to you without them present. So I'll start with Daniel. His post-secondary plans are to go to Mabel State to study elementary education, and he plans to play basketball there, which is very exciting. It's a dream he's wanted to accomplish for his whole life. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, 
he still found many positive ways to spend time with his family and be deliberate about his schoolwork. He recalls his fondest memory at Osaka's public schools is playing Uno in the senior lounge. And he admits that he plays more Uno than does schoolwork in the lounge. So Cameron, don't tell your father. Speaking of Cameron, her post-secondary plans are to attend UND to study a pre-med plan, which in either biology or chemistry. Similarly to Daniel, she agrees that the COVID-19 pandemic has allowed her to slow down and focus on her schoolwork and spend lots of quality time with her family. Her fondest memory is all the relationships that she's formed in the school, and she agrees that it is going to be very difficult to leave those behind when she heads off to college. These two also offered words of encouragement to their fellow classmates in the midst of COVID-19 and school and life. The three main points we have to take away from their high school careers are form friendships in high school that will last for the rest of your life, take your schoolwork seriously as it will aid you in life and in post-secondary education, and when trouble times hit you like this virus, be persistent and keep going because you're going to get stronger at the other side. And that's it for Senior Spotlight. Let's head to you, Xander, for a successful Zoom interview with Principal Mr. Hoffarth. Uh, I've, it's interesting for something new. It's definitely, it's different from what we have right now, but it, yeah, it, it's kind of nice for something new. So, I mean, it provides students that um, are organized some flexibility. I, I can see that. Speaking from a school perspective, it's created a number of challenges. Uh, we're having a difficult time connecting consistently with some students, uh, whether it's through email or video conference or phone. We've reached out in, in many capacities and we're just, uh, we're struggling to say the least. And because of that, academics are slipping and so we're trying to reinforce the fact that even though we're not with students every single day, that grading is still in place and we want everybody that is an underclassman to be eligible for fall activities and it, it all boils down to getting getting work done and creating that new that new balance between the other commitments for each day with uh, still getting schoolwork finished as well yeah i i know i have had a few times where it's like what do i put priorities on over what trying to get everything done so it's on time and in. Yeah, and, and the nice thing is that that the staff realizes that this is not easy, and, and they're more than willing to to work with individual students if there are if you're having internet challenges or whatever it may be. If there need to be some extensions, everybody's more than willing to to allow for that because we get it, and nobody chose this and. And we're, we're all trying to do the best we can to get through it together. Yeah. Um, so what do you take on this situation personally? My, my take is if, if I personally would have been given the option of choosing between traditional school and distance learning school long ago, I don't know that I would have been an educator because I missed the day-to-day personal interaction with students and staff. And, and yes, we've, we've tried to make up for some of that with video chats such as this, but it's, it's just not the same. And the advantage that we have is we sort of know each other already because we've had the opportunity to work together within the building for years. But uh, I could just imagine how you lose that personal connection if this is the only way you get to know students. Yeah. And I, it, not having the connection with all your friends, it's a little bit odd. Just a sudden change, it's a just a bit odd. No, and, and you're right in saying that, Xander, that it was sudden. It was very abrupt. I mean, when we were given the information back in mid-March, uh, you know, we were prepared for eight days of distance learning planning, and then beyond that, two weeks of distance learning material and that that two weeks is now changed into four weeks and and uh, in reality there's no foreseeable end in sight so so now in addition to distance learning planning we're trying to make sure that we do due diligence for normal end of the year procedures of uh, graduation being one of them mm -hmm. graduation is is something that people have worked hard to um, have the right to 
that, that rite of passage where you're going from, from uh, high school to the next step, whether that's working or military or college. Uh, and in this case, with the unknowns of the next month, we don't know what that's going to look like, but we have started planning. Uh, we've got a committed group of staff members and we're working with the, the uh, 15 honor students in the senior class to plan a ceremony that is going to be the best it possibly can be. And, and at this point, with, with it being in the early planning phases, we do know that at least one portion of it is going to be composed of a video. And that, that video is something that people will have forever. We are going to work hard to have an have a actual physical component too. And it looks like there will be a parade. It looks like that we'll be able to have, um, have a diploma issue that would sort of be like a drive-through diploma issue where students each get their diploma. We will have, we will have names read off. We have been working with a number of outside agencies, including the National Guard. They are going to be providing um, a speaker system or an audio system, I should maybe say, so that we can announce the names of the students because that's part of graduation. All seniors are still going to have caps and gowns. They're going to have an opportunity to have cords on their, on their gowns like they normally would. So again, we're trying to do the best we can under on normal circumstances to provide something that is at least in resemblance of the normal for these seniors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've heard it's been especially rough on the seniors. Well, this is a special time of their life and they don't get to spend it how normal seniors would missing out on stuff like uh, the prom was up for debate and well, graduation like you were talking about and various things like that. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's uh, hitting, hitting not just seniors, but I mean, all students, staff members, it's become very, very clear that we're not the same without the opportunity to work together in person. It's, it's just not the same experience. Education has definitely changed. And uh, I mean, it's, it's made it very evident that as humans, we depend heavily on social interaction and that that's been limited to say the least. Yeah. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to the students or the teachers or just the community in general? Sure, absolutely. And I'll start by just sharing a general message to the students. And, and that is that, again, we are here to support you. We know that distance learning is not easy. We know that it's presented challenges that were unforeseen, whether it's communication or the ability to just talk to somebody. But as staff members, we are here. Uh, here means a couple of different things. For me, I am still in the building every single day and I'm responding to emails and phone calls and I'm having video conferences. Teaching staff, they are in and out of the building over the course of the week. Uh, there are times when they are here because they have better access to Wi-Fi that's helping them communicate with students or prepare materials for the students, but they are here to help as well. So don't ever hesitate students to communicate with us if you have questions or concerns at all. Reach out via email, we will be accessible by phone because even teaching staff that aren't in the building every single day, they get voice messages and they will get back to you. Again, we want to, we want to get through this together. So that, that'd be my main message on, on short notice to students is that we are here for you, we miss you, we care. And we can't look forward to the day where we, we have something that is more normal. The message to the staff is, I couldn't be more proud of what our staff has done because again, I've mentioned that nobody chose this, but our staff has gone way above and beyond and they have shown that they're committed to not only our school, but they're committed to students, they're committed to our community. Our staff is making it very well known that they, this is difficult on our staff because they miss being directly with you as students. Uh, in my conversations with staff members, it's very common to hear, I just miss my students. I wish I could be able to see them. And what that does is it reinforces the importance of how special of a place we have because we've got such a caring staff. So that'd be my message to our staff. We certainly appreciate what you're doing. We, we 
we know that uh, it's not normal. We've got a staff that cares more than the average staff. So that'd be my message to staff. And my message to community would be, please continue to be patient with us because we're trying to do the best we can to get through this. We're communicating on a regular basis in terms of things like graduation. There are unknowns, but we've got a committee that's meeting. That committee is made up of senior class advisors and honor students, and we are working together with plans. And we will have a letter that is sent out to seniors and their parents so they understand that this is being worked on. But we have to make sure that if there are questions, be sure to call and ask us at school. We don't want misinformation to get out there. And the last thing we want to have happen is seniors feel like they're, they're not going to be recognized. Because honestly, with what I am involved in, I can say that even though graduation will not be normal, the community is pulling together to provide an experience that's going to be memorable for a long time for this year's seniors. And we will have to be respectful of all the restrictions that are in place. And again, we don't know what the restrictions will look like one month from now, but we have to start planning now and we're working on that. So my message to community would be summarized as saying, thank you for your support and continue to be patient with us because we are working to do the best we can. Well, uh, thank you for that. And thank you for your time. I know your schedule can be quite hectic at times. Well, uh, we should probably wrap this interview up. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, Xander. So, again, thank you. Hang in there. Spread the news that uh, there's still a lot of good things happening. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you so much to all the people we interviewed and to you for watching this episode of Silver Streak News. Um, until next time, stay safe. And I'm Logan. I'm Xander. I'm Maddie. And I'm Thomas. And we'll see you next week for episode 10. Bye! Bye.